learn more about how black communities across America can live out the definition of community coming up on my episode of Let's Talk Nonprofit. Let's Talk Nonprofits is sponsored by Renaissance Christian Academy and Brene Foundation. Hello and welcome again to Let's Talk Nonprofits, a platform show discussion where we bring about those great nuggets, those best practices to help nonprofit organizations increase their awareness, their funding, their sustainability, and ultimately their impact. So we're grateful that you were able to join us again. And as always, we have a great guest on to share some great nuggets about great things they're doing in the community. And yes, great is the significant word here today. So welcome to Jason Warner of Own Division Foundation. Welcome. Nash, thanks for having me. Uh, I guess we go back a couple years, but yeah. I appreciate uh, connecting and reconnecting with yeah. you and talking about what we're doing at Own the Vision Foundation. Um, I'm excited. I think the team's excited and hopefully the country's going to be excited. I just somebody, somebody just reached out to me the other day from London on Facebook and was like, can I help? Wow. I'm not in America, but can I help? Wow. Um, and, you know, things like that yeah. make make what we're doing so important. Yeah. And, and you're going to find out exactly what Jason is referencing, and we're sure that you will get excited once you hear about it. In fact, I am truly excited. Uh, as Jason alluded to, you know, we met a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, and uh, we both were in a different space at that time. But since then, I've noticed that Jason has taken on a very significant change challenge in uh, the community, and we're looking forward to discussing that now. So we're going to dive right in. Here, Jason is, and I like the way you put this, um, your title is the chief vision owner. Right. Okay. Talk about that. Well, me. you know, so it's the Own the Vision Foundation, yeah. um, and you know, there's CEOs and there's all these things, but this is a vision of success for black America. Um, and, you know, for me, it's not about me. I just had an idea. I brought people together. I looked at what's going on, and you have great researchers and great thought leaders doing great work. And what we did is look at the missing ingredient. Okay. When you met me, I was in crisis communication. Yeah. Um, I was at yeah. Fixer. Yeah. So you, you yeah. look at, uh, uh, what's that show, Scandal, and they fixed it. <laughs> I did it for corporations all across the country and yeah. in the world. Um, and I was looking at what's going on in black America. And there has to be a solution. I think we were looking a lot of times on surface level. Um, you, you see the marches and the rallies and the prayers and the sit-ins yeah. and the ins yeah. And then you have the scholarly thought talking about group economics and making that work and supporting yeah. black business. And I, I think we were just one layer too high. If you look at a cake mm. and you say you got a layer of cake and mm. you want to get to the good part, you mm. got to go a little further down. Okay. Um, and that's what we did for the past um, 18 months. You, you know, kind of sat and yeah. looked at that layer. I, I, I want Jason to, to, to go back. I, I want Jason to talk about how Own the Vision came about because those things you just heard him describe, you know, about what they're doing and what is the missing part. But I want you to share with the viewers how uh, there was a particular um, event or a, 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 a demonstration taking place and you were a part of it. W would you share that story with them? No, no problem. Um, so, you know, after the death of Trayvon Martin and uh, Eric Gardner and folks the like, around the country they were having die-ins. Yeah. Um, you saw this about two years ago in New York, people just lay out in the middle yeah. of the street. And here in Atlanta, on the 17th Street Bridge, uh, the National Greek, uh, Black Greek Organizations had a die-in. Mm -hmm. I'm not a part of one of the organizations, but I'm a part of the cause the, right. to, to make change. So I said, I'm going to go out and see, you know, what different thoughts they have. So we went and laid down on the 17th Street Bridge, laid down to show solidarity. Yeah. Uh, I guess it was five, seven minutes, I don't remember the exact time. Mm -hmm. But we laid down. Media was out there. It's great. We got up, took some pictures, and I was like, what's next? And they said, well, we can go get something to eat. Wow. We can go support a black business, get something to eat. And to me, I was like, this, this is not wow. it. Yeah. You know, we're walking back to the parking deck with some friends and talking about, we start talking about a number of different things. Um, and I said, you know what? 
Started my career out in local government. Worked at PR agencies, consultant, um, now in higher education. Yeah. And I said, we we gotta fix this. Yeah. And we gotta look deep, deeper um, yeah. and what's, what's the next action. Because you see the marches, yeah. you see the protests. Right. How do we get from there to success? Yeah. And, and guys, you know, I, I want Jason to share before we continue uh, to delve, but, you know, so you understand what OWN Division is truly about, its purpose and all of that. Would you share that with them? Yeah, so the OWN Division Foundation, our goal is to create a financial infrastructure for black America. You talk about what moves this country. And we study successful communities around the country. You look at uh, Asian very successful. Jewish community, very successful. For the most part, white America, very successful. Yeah. German, all, all this success. And what's what's that missing character? Black America has been focusing so much on social justice and forget that we live in a capitalistic society. Mm. Yeah. I wrote uh, about six months ago, I said, what if I told you that race had nothing to do with color, but groups or teams racing to control the means of production mm. and commerce? Oh, wow. You Powerful. fall a victim to racism if you don't participate as a team. Wow. For so long, black America has been participating as an individual sport and not con coming together wow. to, to, to to collaborate. And you talk about group economics, but a lot of times when we talk about that, we take out the science of economics, we think, oh, I can spend money with Nash, yeah. Nash spends money with me, yeah. and the problem solved. Yeah. But there's no infrastructure. Yeah. Corporations are built by infrastructure. A house is built by infrastructure. <laughs> you have a foundation, you don't say here, the top, right. and let's go down. Right. So what we decided to do is look at how we can form that infrastructure and bring everybody to be a part of it. Every group, every organization, everyone can benefit, so the collective benefits. And this is not just looking at uh, only the vision of success for Black America. Mm -hmm. It's only a vision of successful America. Wow. I, you know, I I like that idea. I, I think there's some freshness that I was able to uh, pick up on what the organization is doing as I was doing the research for the show and definitely talking with you in more depth. Uh, you know, the freshness that I hear is, like you say, the focus that I have always been aware of coming from the community has been let's spend more with each other. Let's right. spend more with each other. Let's go over here. Uh, there are apps that let you know where there are black uh, businesses right. located. Right. And that's good. That's amazing. Yeah, very much so. But you're taking this thing not just a step, but many steps further and deeper. The other thing that I remember from your um, information is the fact that you talk about putting money into the community right. and not just through buying and selling. Would you share some of those concepts? So the goal of the foundation yeah. is, is 44 million plus or minus black people in America, right? Okay. We spent $1.3 trillion a year. Yeah. Goal is for every black person in America. So you all listening, all right. and if you're empathetic to the cause, yes, one dollar a month, twelve dollars a year to donate to the foundation. Wow. So we take that forty-four million dollars and put it right back in the community in a couple of different nodes because you have to build the infrastructure. Yeah. You can't just say, "Oh yeah, we just want to support this," and that's great. Yeah. But we had to look at it from a layered approach and how every it's all inclusive. So first level, look at our HBCUs. Okay. They're failing. And I was looking at the University of Missouri situation. I was like, man, yeah. like all these students, first of all, they make up 2% of the university's population, yeah. but 68% of the football team's yeah. population. They're trying to just fight for what's right. Yeah. They get threats, they get all these different things. Like there was even a, 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 legisl a state legislator to try to pass, introduce a bill to say if you protest, you could lose your scholarship. Wow, I missed that. Uh, yeah. the, the bill was defeated, but yeah. like that's the type of setup. Yeah. And I was like, well, all these HBCUs, why couldn't they offer full scholarship to these athletes? Mm. You look at, and so what we said is, we'll fund them. So it was about 107, I think, last number, about 102. We lost a couple, unfortunately. Right. Um, and fund them equally. So four months, every other year, every HBCU is funded from now in the Kingdom Come. So, every month, <laughs> for every fund. other year. So, e every other year. Yeah. So, I currently work full-time for Johnson C. Smith University. Right. Right? Right. 
they get, let's say, half a million dollars. Every other year, they'll get half a million dollars from Kingdom Come. Yeah. I graduated from Florida a &M. Every other year, yeah. they'll get half a million dollars. So we equally fund the organization. Okay. But we go take one step further. We have process improvement consultants and consultants to walk alongside them. It's like when you work out, you need a trainer. Yeah. You know, you know how to work out, yeah. but it's that person that holds you accountable and walks with you. So what we said is, some of the times, organizations fail because they don't have a good cash flow management system. Right. So let's look in and, and not have that emotional piece, but mm -hmm. because we're inside, and let's look at what outside lens and, and dive in and say, what well, let's fix the inside so we're not just dropping money into a bottomless pit. Mm. So if it's if they haven't done a desk audit in so many years, not saying that Nash is not a great person. Yeah. She, he may not be a great person for that role. That's Net, right. Might need to be shifted to another role in yeah. the organization and bring out the qualities that Nash brings to the table. So let's look at all of these things so we can be that accountability partner. And if they need a $100,000 process improvement ca or cash flow management system, yeah. we pay it yeah. and still give them the money. Yeah. We pay for it because we want them to be wow. thriving. Wow. And we look at all these great black technology folks and say, you invented this new cash flow management system, right. so let's put that in right, there. Right. So we fund our HBCUs. Wow. And next step, our national nonprofits. So Urban League, PUSH, National Action Network, NAACP, Black Lives Matter, all these great organizations doing the work. We're not trying to do the work and yeah. recreate the will. Here's the money to do it. Yeah. So Urban League, if you have an entrepreneurship program, right? Yeah. Here's a million dollars every single month. Trickle it down to your affiliates. If I'm in Miami, Florida, if I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, go in and I want to go through your program. There may be a cost because if you don't pay for something, you know, sometimes it's, right. you don't have a value. That's so, but if it's a, it's a, it's a it's menial cost, it, say $100 to go yeah. through the program, yeah. right? Yeah. You come out with a fundable, scalable plan. Well, the problem is all these nonprofits are fighting for the same dollar from yeah. these corporate corporations. Absolutely. And... There's only five black CEOs of corporations and Fortune 500 companies. 99% are run by white men. Nothing against white men, but their agenda yeah. is not the same yeah. of these organizations. Yeah. yeah. So they come from a different view and perspective. A corporate CEO, all their main job is to increase profits. For the shareholders. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So if this population is spending, we're going to give some money here and give some money there. But it's not for social justice and change. So NAACP, if you're doing community change, service and community education, here's the money to do it. Mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter, you're doing, you know, d radical disturbance and, and protest. Here's the money for the lawyers and everything else yeah. you need to do. Do what you do best. We don't need to do it. Yeah. We just need to hold you accountable and give you the funds mm -hmm. to do what you do. I, 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 first of all, I like the idea of uh, the fact that Jason mentions we're not just throwing money at an organization, but we're going in and we're doing some evaluation, assessment of it, what's working, what's not, and how we can uh, improve upon it, but then providing the means to accomplish right. that. You know, again, on this show, we talk about the nuggets that we take away so that your organization can improve upon its uh, strategic implementations and, and just put up uh, processes. And again, that's critical, guys. You know, so on your notes that you're taking, you know, understand he, he, the, the idea is great, the idea is wonderful, but we're not just going to put money into a bucket, as he put it, empty hole, and just let it keep going, but we're going to look at the processes, evaluate your systems that are going on, determine what's working. Went even further and talked about assessing desk having performance desk assessments so that you can find out uh, as um, just forgot his name now but John Collins John mm -hmm. Collins talking about doing assessments so you can make people are not on the not only on the bus right. but they're sitting in the right seats right. so you know so that the organization is able to run effectively and efficiently and guys I there he said that there was a third one and we're gonna get to it and and I don't know how he truly describes his structuring but uh, I see a three-legged stool oh it's, it's it's a third and a fourth oh yeah, excuse it's, it's, me it's a couple things because it's infrastructure yeah well let me tell you this we're, we're going to take this break to definitely acknowledge our sponsors that make this uh, show possible I told you we were gonna have some great content and that's why the word great was significant for today, so we will see you right after the break. What happens when soldiers come home? 
Brene Foundation offers hero support to ensure that our heroes abroad can continue to be heroes at home. We link veterans with organizations who are dedicated to guiding the transition from military hero to civilian hero. If you want to find out how you can support our troops at home, please contact the Brene Foundation or visit Brene.com. Does your son need a more challenging, focused, and encouraging educational environment? Renaissance Christian Academy is an affordable private school for boys located in McDonough, Georgia, with certified teachers that are uniquely equipped to help your son master learning. You're welcome to schedule a tour of our facilities by calling 770-305-9881 or by visiting our website at rcaboysacademy.org. Renaissance Christian Academy, developing young men to be great leaders through Christ-centered learning. Welcome back. And again, we do thank our sponsors for making this opportunity possible to share great content uh, for you and with you. So we're going to continue here with Jason Warner, the Chief Vision Owner at Own the Vision Foundation. We're discussing how to effectively address and improve upon the condition, not only of black America, and I hope you really caught that during the first segment, but he's talking about the foundation having an impact that will help America in, June, in general, and specifically by sh shoring up that component of the black community that is accomplished. So we've talked about the uh, infrastructure uh, that, that you've designed to impact and achieve that objective. You talked about the HBCUs. You talked about national black uh, nonprofit organizations. And we're going to continue. What are the other components of the structure? So we have real estate. Okay. Um, we have legal. Okay. Media, like yourself. All right, thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, business. Okay. Uh, one of the things that we look at also, so there's a 46% unemployment rate in black America. People look at the national average 5.5, but black America makes up 13% of the population. That's 44 million people. So based on that, you're looking at 20 million people that are unemployed or at the poverty level. Right? Yeah. So how do you build that and how do you shift that? Um, so we talked a little bit about from the nonprofit sector yeah. and funding those organizations. That's the training ground. Okay. The HBCUs are the training ground. A lot of our businesses, when we look at, they 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 fail because you skip a step. When you have forty six percent of the population unemployed, you make emotional decisions. Mm. You say, "I got to start my own business," mm. but I forget the supply chain. I forget the cash flow management. I forget scalability. Okay. I forget all of these steps. So, like I said, when you fund these programs that teach you these steps, now you can have sustainable businesses, and then you can take a step forward, forward and hire people okay. to work in these businesses. Okay. So that's that economic, yeah. you know, that group economics, that's the ep economics in it. Yeah. So this is what we do with real estate. You see strip malls all around the community that are vacant. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, uh, right now you're seeing just big corporate buildings, multi-floor, high-rise buildings that are vacant or for sale. For I mean, here in Atlanta, the, what, the Equitable Building a couple years ago foreclosed? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what type of... Well, let's buy it. Let's buy it and hire these black contractors. Mm. And people that may have been transitioning out of a, a situation, like, you can learn a skill in a trade and help rebuild it. Wow. So you rebuild these strip malls. So now... Gotcha. Nash has a business idea. He comes in, you can come into that place of business five years rent free. Mm. Because the, the goal is not to hurt you, but the goal is to mm. make sure you have this ability to hire and shift that 46%. Okay. So we know in the first five years it's that make or break time. Yeah. You're, you're operating a lot of times in the red. Yeah. Here's five years rent free, and then you're still not going to pay market value because it's a foundation owned. Wow. All right? Yeah. And it's rebuilt. And you built it. So all the goal is to go back into the community. One of the things that shocked me the most, there's not one national black home grocery store chain. But we eat every single day. <laughs> okay. We eat, okay. We, you know. Yeah. And, and we have black farmers that are trying to get their produce and their meat and all their different goods and services to these, you know, chains. So they're fighting to get into Publix and the okay. Kroger's and the Walmart's. But you still have the other organizations that are fighting to get in. Why don't we give them an outlet and not build this grocery store chain as another super one-person power? Again, Nash mm. used to be the manager of Publix. Mm. 
now you can be an owner operator of this mm. chain. So it doesn't it just give one or a corporate yeah. structure yeah. wealth. Now you have generational wealth to leave your family. Yeah. So in you know, southwest Atlanta here in Chicago, the Jackson family has this. In Oakland the Smith family has yeah. this. In Miami the the Johnson family, whomever. Yeah. Now you're building this infrastructure. Now you can employ people in your community. Because I, one of the things I look about employment, it's not racist. People hire who they're comfortable with and connected with. That's right. Going back to 99% right. of the CEOs are white men. Yeah. If you are a white man that went to a predominantly white institution, grew up in the middle of white America, yeah. and most of your friends are white, you pledged a white fraternity, yeah. you may know Tyrone, you may know Jason, and you'll give Tyrone and Jason a chance because you're connected to him. Yeah. That's not I don't dislike yeah. you, but you hire who you're comfortable yeah. with. I, Jason, <laughs> I'm, I, I want, and I promise you, because I have to promise my wife I'm not going to get on this, but I, I have to say this because you have hit on what I think many of us in the black community have missed. That very point. Um, I, it, it was a 4th of July, mm -hmm. I think, last year when, you know, again, I was reading some of the historical documents and one particular, uh, Plessy versus Ferguson. Right. Effect. And, you know, but when you read that thing carefully and really understand what the argument really was from uh, the, the state's position, if you will, you know, uh, Ferguson's position, what, what they really were arguing Brother, it's right in line with what you're talking about. It, it wasn't that we got anything really against um, uh, Plessy. Mm -hmm. We really got an issue about maintaining our posterity and those that look like us. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to do is understand what you just said. And I, I want to share this. And it's the first time I've said this from in, on any type of platform right. as public as, as this. Uh, and, you know, and I stand by what I'm about to say is that uh, w we know that people do business with people they know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. And when you start out a business, you know, generally you're going to start in your circle. And, and what is that circle made of? It's made up of what you just described. Right. College friends, neighborhoods buddies you know that you trust right. and so white America the white male he, that's who he knows right and so but we do have to step back because okay. the country is built on inequity we yes. talk about equality a lot yes. but it was built on inequity yes. you built a country a, the world superpower on the back of free labor yes so you know I was talking to someone um, when we did the soft launch of the foundation I said you know Donald Trump said something pretty inspiring and people look like Donald Trump says something pretty inspiring. He said, I never had it always oh, easy. He's like, when I started, I got a small loan from my dad for a million dollars. That's his perspective. But what he didn't think about or didn't talk about, how did my dad get this wealth? He grew up into a billionaire family off the backs of free labor. So to, in order for us to bridge the equity gap, we're going to have to shift some of the money that we spent and build this infrastructure. Yeah. So it goes into that. So building. So going back from the real estate standpoint, we put these grocery stores and they're in there rent free for five years. The goal is to build. So the other side of that is from the residential. So you see all these homes being or neighborhoods being gentrified yeah. across the country. Yeah. So Mr. and Mrs. Jackson, they live in a black community and most black communities unfortunately are impoverished right there's a couple of direct correlations there too lower performing schools mm -hmm. parks after school programs yeah. roads all this because low value homes yeah. you go into a half a million million dollar area great schools yeah. great however the money's supposed to be distributed equally yeah. but clearly it's not yeah. we see it time and time again you can graduate from the same school system in a good part of town versus an impoverished part of town. And the impoverished part of town, the students are failing, they're not performing well. They, even if they make it to college, they're still step behind. You go into this wealthy area, oh, they got all the bells and whistles going to the Ivy League because of the lack of equity. Yeah. So we say, Mr. and Mrs. Jackson, you live in this house that's valued at $100,000. You know that developer said they're going to come and buy you out. Don't worry. We just bought this apartment complex. I need you to come live in there for a couple months. When you come back, just like that uh, stream makeover home edition, <laughs> literally, we rebuilt your house. Wow. So you can go from a $100,000 house to a half a million dollar house. 
but we deposit the money every month into black banks. So we go to this black bank in the community. And one of the things about black banks, we're going to put them in these grocery stores because people don't go to different yeah. black banks, because not because you don't want to. It's convenience. Yeah. You can go Absolutely. to Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Absolutely. Chase, all these different things because it's in every neighborhood, Absolutely. every corner. Now let's put them in every neighborhood, every corner. Yeah. Let, let's give them the opportunity to expand. So going back to Mr. and Ms. Jackson home, now we restructure a loan to a 30-year fix at 2 to 3%. Because we need to offset that tax burden. Yeah. You went from a $100,000 house to a $500,000 house. You're still paying a $100,000 mortgage. But I need to restructure your mortgage so that you're paying less or right at what you were paying before mm -hmm. because you have now this $500,000 yeah. tax yeah. burden. But the tax burden does this. It helps your schools in your community, your parks, yeah. your roads, your, all your community yeah. services. But it also did this for Mr. and Mrs. Jackson. They have $400,000 of wealth now. Yeah that they can leave to their family when they go to the bank and they want to start their business because they went through the Urban League's entrepreneurship program. Yeah. Now they have collateral, not just credit, which mm -hmm. the country was built on. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had collateral from all this mm -hmm. land. Mm -hmm. Now you have $400,000 in equity. Right. You can send your kids to school not worrying about, man, we got these high interest rate loans. Because that equity loan is a lot lower than yeah. that, and it's just into your regular mortgage yeah. payment. So the kids are not 10 steps behind because they're coming out with all this debt. So we shift with this, we shift communities, you shift value, you shift, you're leaving a legacy, you change the mindset. You change the mindset of a community, now we can shift. People talk about black on black crime <clears throat> because. I mean, it's black on black crime, it's white on white crime. People hurt and kill who they're come, right. connected to. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not just going out to Alpharetta, just, I'm just going to shoot somebody right. because, like, right. who do I know there? Right. You know, right. but there's a direct correlation with crime and unemployment. Right. I told you before, there's a 46% unemployment yeah. rate. So we shift that and you shift communities. So what, what, what happens when you shift a 46% unemployment rate to the national average of 5.5%? Mm. You wow. change the economy of the wow. United States. Wow. So that's how everyone is great. People talk about making America great again. I said making America great finally. Mm. Because we negate all this history. Like it's this elephant in the room. Yeah. You know, um, uh, uh, Dr. Joy uh, DeGroy, she wrote the book, um, The um, Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. Okay. And it talks about. Every other disenfranchised group received counseling, received reparations. So all these different Holocaust, there was counseling, there was billions of dollars invested in to get them back on their feet. Japanese after the bomb, counseling. We're you talking about this 2016, the 500th year that we were brought here. Every other group has come here on their own. And they're like, well, why can't you? We asked to come here. But we came here and we worked, they literally worked to death. And then you have generational thought processes, how this country is structured. So if you get a chance, go check out the book, um, the, the, the uh, Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. It will open your mind. Um, we have a video of her talking about it on the Facebook page. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's. It, Guys, we, we ask that you please, you know, there, there's a whole lot of history that we are familiar with or we think we know, but uh, definitely check out the book there. Um, you know, I have to because I'm not familiar with it, but I, I, I want, want you to take away this uh, as we complete the uh, conversation with uh, Mr. Jason Warner. Um, the, the thing that I'm hearing, um, Jason, I'm hearing this piece about, um, one, we've heard before about taking care of ourselves, mm -hmm. but not from the antagonistic perspective, you know. And we know sometimes there's the majority uh, uh, of people who sometimes think when we begin to think about ourselves and look at ourselves that it's a uh, dislike or something against them, and it's not. You know, it's about, like you say, if we take care of ourselves, you know, then we can also then be a part of making America, I like great, you say, finally. great, I, I love that, great, finally. And again, I, and I'm going to go back just briefly to that Plessy versus Ferguson piece, you know, and at the core of that whole message that I take away from what I've read is that there were those who, 
who used the reference from the founding fathers that it's about our posterity. And blacks and those enslaved, like you say, bro, oh, they were not a part of that posterity. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they weren't supposed to get it. But you're saying, as I agree, that, you know, we were brought here and I'm not one of those who advocate going back. I mean, our blood has, has purchased our right. And therefore, it's our responsibility to make sure that our posterity are taken care of or is taken care of just as you described. And, and Jason, I, I must admit, uh, this is very radical. Uh, in terms of a, a strategic approach to doing it. Uh, I think it's very plausible from what I'm hearing that you describe. And the only thing that for those of you who may be viewing, saying, oh, it's, uh, oh well, we've heard this before. We've heard, you know, I promise you, uh, from all of my engagement with the economics of black community, you know, this is the first time I've been engaged in hearing such a detailed approach to the issue. Well, you know, one of the things, like I said, it's it's not trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. It's just put the missing puzzle yeah. pieces. Put yeah. it together. So, literally, um, and this is a, to everyone watching, visit ownthevision.com. Yeah. www.ownthevision.com. That's O-W-N. Yes. Ownthevision.com. Donate your $1 per month. Or they can just give the $12 the You can do the $12 up front. Up front. And you can, if you want to do more, you can. We we've had you know folks, uh, we got to receive the two hundred and ten dollar donation. It was like what? That's random, but yeah. we appreciate it. But one dollar can change everyone's situation, and it may not affect you tomorrow. But what you'll start to see when you start to see your schools and your community getting yeah. better, it's not about creating a new school. Yeah, it's holding the folks accountable. When you see that shift, when there's more employment opportunities, and you see that structure grow up and grow up, uh, be built in your community, that's where it starts to impact you on a personal level. When your property value goes up, and that's not a bad thing, because yes, you have a tax burden, but at the end of the day, it's a return on the investment. You want to be able to sell it for more than you bought it for, so you need the value to go up. One dollar per month, twelve dollars a year. So for me. I take care of my dollar, my two kids' dollar. So I have to drop <laughs> the $3 a month, okay. you know? Okay. Um, you know, and when they're old enough, they'll donate their dollar okay. themselves. But we have to create a shift. And this is point zero 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 four of what we spend every year. Mm. We spend $1.3 trillion. This $528 million that we're reinvesting and shifting into the community is not going to make or break. If you're homeless, it's not going to make or break your situation. But when we buy these apartment complexes and put homeless folks in there and get the wraparound services for, you know, job yeah. and mental health, because yeah. a lot of people are homeless because of addiction, mental health, and different things Absolutely. that have gone on, and provide them that and a way out, I can show you better than I can tell you. Yeah. I can tell you stop selling drugs, but I'll show you another option. Right. You're just talking. I still right. got to eat. I still right. got to feed my family. Right. Half the people population is unemployed. What do I do? You didn't show me another option. I'm showing you another option now. We're partnering you and showing you that there's black engineers, black doctors, black educators, black lawyers, black entrepreneurs in the sense of starting a business. Not creating yourself a job, yeah. but starting a business. Yeah. One dollar per month, 12 bucks a year. We will make a shift, I promise. Not, it's like never seen in this country, but it'll trickle down all across the world. Because people look at how black people are based off of what America's definition of that is. Absolutely. Guys, we thank you again for tuning in. And again, we ask that you go visit www.ondivision.com and reach out to the leaders of that organization. If you have further questions, I promise you they will engage. If you have some other whatever that you think you need more information, I promise you that they will be willing to um, answer and engage you appropriately. I'm going to ask you to do me a huge favor. I know you realize the value of this information that you shared and that you just listened to. 
I'm asking that you take this link that you're viewing this from and that you share it through your social media networks. I'm asking that you put it on your Facebook. I'm asking that you put it on your YouTube channel. I, I'm asking you put it anywhere, everywhere that you can socially. I'm asking you to ask the people to share it because when you tell them what to do on your social media network, that's what they do. They can like it and that's fine and good, but we want them to share it. We want them to engage with comments and discussion. Start discussions on this topic. If you disagree with what you've heard, if you think that this is nothing but a same old spin the wheel being you know thing mention that carry on discussion and talk about why you think it is for those of you who can see it and you're inspired and want to know how you can get your dollar your twelve dollars or whatever it is that you need to get to own the foundation talk about why you believe it is start the conversation make it happen guys this is your community and this is not just for those of viewers who happen to be people of color those of you who are great friends with us business partner with us who are of, of other color we ask you to get a part of this again I love the fact that Jason is not making this a a, a black thing this thing is truly an American thing about making America great finally. So again, we, as we wrap up here, we thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk Nonprofits. And Jason, before we go, any last parting words that you would like to share? Last words. You can follow us a lot. We we'll talked about the foundation website, www.ownthevision.com. But we're on Facebook, and we engage a lot um, in that conversation. Yeah. We're really responsive. So it's facebook.com backslash own the vision. On Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, it's own the vision, at own the vision. So it's real easy to find yeah. us. Um, we're really, like I said, we really engage on the Facebook platform. And it, it, it's truly about creating a shift and bridging that equity gap so that we all have a an equal opportunity once the equity is there for everyone to own that vision of success. I appreciate you guys. Uh, Jason, we appreciate having you and we appreciate what you're doing with Own the Foundation and we look forward to Business TV Network being a part of helping this success. So again, we thank you and as we close, we ask you to again visit us at bizlinks.tv. Also, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash bizlinks.tv. Um, take out the dot there, YouTube channel, BizLinks uh, TV as well. So we're found everywhere, BizLinks TV. And stay tuned, subscribe to our pages, and, um, and like us on Facebook. Until next time, stay focused and continue to rise to the top.